him. Hebrew Chronicles gives this description of him. In this Himalayan remote, there lived a great yogi known as Maharishi Nandi Nava, a rare and illumined soul whose inner eye was open to the perfection of the universe, a knower of Shiva, of the self-god within. He himself derived from a long line of Satgurus whose names and biographies are lost, and thus he is regarded as the first known preceptor of the lineage known today as the Nandinada Sampradaya, the Agamic tradition that Subramunya Swami had discovered in Salon. The second master of this lineage is Rishi Tudumula. The Guru Chronicles gives this description of him. Having achieved the eight siddhis in perfect enlightenment at the feet of the Nada Guru Maharishi Nandi Nada in the Himalayas, Rishi Sundara Nada, later to be known as Rishi Tirumular, joined the venerable Nada lineage and later became one of its most celebrated yogis. The first known Sat Guru of this lineage in recent history was the Rishi from the Himalayas. Little is known of him. One story, though, that is a favorite is described in the Guru Chronicles. Rishi from the Himalayas became a legend when he sat for seven years in a tea shop without moving. People came from far and near to witness this miracle. So many that a brass railing was installed to keep the crowd from touching him and disturbing his meditation. Rishi passed the power on to Kalite Swami of Bangalore, also known as Muktiananda. He was a great Siddha and known for performing many miracles. He took the Guru lineage from India to Sri Lanka. The Guru Chronicles gives this description. Kalite Swami, famed for his ever-present umbrella, was a Jishu officer turned mendicant, an Indian who guided the spiritual life of Sri Lanka a linguist who preached in the commoner's marketplace and led a renaissance of Saivism among the Tamil people of Jaffna. Next in the lineage is sage Chelapa Swami, a Sri Lankan initiated by Kadai Swami. He was eccentric in manner, known for repeating the same mystic utterance over and over for months on end. The Guru Chronicles gives this description of him. Chalapa Swami was a difficult man to be near, fiery and outspoken, bold and taunting, preferring his own company and often mumbling nonsense. With his tattered bhishti and unforgiving manner, it is little wonder only a few strong disciples drew close. Yoga Swami is next. As his name indicates, he was known for his tendency to meditate for lengthy periods. The Guru Chronicles gives this description of his early years in Sri Lanka. As a boy in northern Ceylon, Sadasivan was surrounded by the religion of his community. The strict Saivism that despite foreign rule had survived intact. He would have seen many sadhus as he grew up, the holy mendicants and wanderers whose simple life was centered on God, whose search was for Shiva consciousness and grace. Savaya Subramanya Swami is next, born in America as Robert Henson. Robert sailed for Ceylon in 1947. In Ceylon in 1949, he met Siva Yoga Swami, who initiated him with a powerful slap on the back. The Guru Chronicles describes this momentous event. At the end of their third visit, Yoga Swami followed his American visitor out to the gate. Coming up behind, he gave Subramunya a powerful slap on the back that nearly toppled the taller youth. It was a spiritual initiation, one so potent that elders looking on stood perplexed. Now that we have briefly introduced all seven gurus of this lineage, we'll move on to talking about some of the core teachings of the book. One of the beauties of this book is that it gives the teachings in story form. And of course, stories are the best part, right? So it's, it's very approachable, particularly for teenagers and youth to learn the tradition through stories. 
So the Guru Chronicles gives us a classic story that illustrates the Hindu perspective on personal realization of God. It was the second meeting between Yosiva Yoga Swami and his Guru Sage Chalapa Swami, which took place in about 1895. The story illustrates how you can experience deeper inner states in the Guru's presence through the Guru's grace. In this story, Yoga Swami is referred to by his boyhood name, Yoganathan. Yoganathan was walking along the road outside Nalur Temple. Sage Chalapa Swami shook the bars within the chariot shed where he camped and boldly challenged, Hey, who are you? Yoganathan was transfixed by the simple piercing inquiry. Their eyes met and Yoganathan froze. Jalapa Swami's glance went right to his soul. The sage's eyes were like diamonds, fiery and sharp, and they held his with such intensity that Yoganathan felt his breath stopping, his stomach in a knot, his heart pounding in his ears. He stared back at Jalapa Swami. 